to wander, 40 days to die to self, 40 days to grow stronger as faith breaks open the gates of hell. The Jubilee is over, but grace is far from gone. In the hearts of the faithful, broken on the wheels of love. Cause in the desert of temptation lies the storm of true conversion. Where springs of living water drown and refresh you. And as the Jordan pours out change, your true self is all that remains. Where springs of living water bind and break you, bind and break you. Forty days to remember the Paschal sacrifice. Forty days to discover his passion calls us to new life. The jubilee is over, but mercy is far from gone. In the arms of the Father, as the wayward child comes home, goes in the desert of temptation, lies the storm of true conversion. Where springs of Your true self is all that remains Where springs of living water Bind and break you Bind and break you Let us pray. O timeless one, you renew your promise in every generation. Deepen our awareness of the communion of saints who have gone before us, the saints in our own time, and the saints who will carry on your message of grace after us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and a Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Savior, I come. Quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hill, for your blood was spilled, for my ransom, everything I once held.
tempted and tried. You won. The Word became flesh for my sin in death. Now you're risen, and everything I once held. this evening before I get to the three main questions. Is it possible to know Jesus without the Hebrew Scriptures, or in other words, the Old Testament? Well, not in Jesus' fullness. I mean, the Church answered that question early on in its history. And, and these figures of Moses and Elijah that we have appearing with Jesus in our text for this week on the mountain of Transfiguration, well, they they emphasize this conclusion. The law and the prophets. That's what we see in these two figures of, of Israel's ancient faith. Indeed, as Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, I have come not to abolish the law, but to complete. Indeed, in his Sermon on the Mount, when, when Jesus makes this statement about completing the law, Jesus is presented as a second Moses. He is there delivering extended teachings that, that build on the sacred Torah that, that Moses the lawgiver had handed to God's holy people. And what about Elijah, that charismatic battler of pagan forces that was able to call down fire from heaven at a moment's notice through the power of prayer, who, who exited the earth itself through fire in that mysterious chariot. Indeed, in Elijah we have the, the embodiment of the whole prophetic tradition where, where God speaks a living word to his appointed servant, and that servant becomes God's mouthpiece, God's megaphone, if you will, sharing the word of God with God's people in a way that reminds us as people of faith over and over again that the word of the Lord, this word will not return to the Lord until it has done what it was spoken to accomplish. No, friends, Jesus does not appear in a vacuum. Israel was appointed to be a light to the nations. Jesus is the light of the world who shines for all people to see, yet that light that light of Jesus was already shining bright in, in front of the Pharaoh, for instance, in Egypt, when Moses proclaimed that Israel's bondage had to end and that God's people must be released from their captivity. That light, which was Jesus, was shining bright in Elijah's battle with the priests of Baal on Mount Carmel, when the idols of the enemies of Israel were found to be completely impotent in making their presence known when a time came for real power to be revealed. 
It's Moses and Elijah. They are part of the great cloud of witnesses that, that bear Jesus, the light of the world, to the world. And by their position to Jesus there on Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration, they are full of revelations to God's mysterious work of salvation as, as this light of God's love is more fully experienced, making faith deepen and grace grow. So now, folks, in tribute to our spiritual ancestors, Moses and Elijah, and their close and important position to Jesus, let's ponder these three questions. Question number one. In our own lives, who are the individuals who have, I guess, helped to influence and shape our faith? Question number two. How might we even now be influencing the faith of others? And question number three, what does it mean for us to listen in life today? God bless our continued Lenten journey in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, please join me and praying those words that Jesus himself taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, please receive this blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.